The McDavid market was scorching hot this past week, but did you miss out on the boat to sell? Plus an interesting deep dive into grading and if the numbers are worrisome or misunderstood. This is episode seven of the Hockey Card Haven podcast. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome. This is the Hockey Card Haven podcast with Mike DiStefano and Anthony Santini here to dive deep into the world of hockey card collecting, flipping, and investing. Got a great show today. I'm excited for it. Anthony, you have no idea how long I, uh, you know, when you go on those rabbit holes where you're, you're, you're just looking up one thing, right? So we plan on talking about the grading market. There were some crazy numbers that came out uh, about the, the grading reports from the month of May. And I went down, I kid you not, a two-hour deep dive into these grading reports. I found this new website. Uh, oh, it's it's very detailed. And I'm going to bring some of the information to uh, to the show when we get to that to that topic. But I spent a good two, three hours just looking up, you know, where the grading, I guess, market stands right now. So I'm excited to get into that conversation and get your thoughts on it. But we got to start where it matters, and that's on the ice, and that's in the Stanley Cup final, my friend. Um, so far through two games uh, to this point in the Stanley Cup finals, and the Florida Panthers up 2 nothing in the series. And as anticipated, it is making a difference in the card market, and that's basically what uh, today's discussion is going to be. Now, we kind of talked about last week how Connor McDavid is, is his market's going to be fascinating to watch over the course of the, the next while here. But by him going down 2 0 in this series, I feel like uh, if you planned on selling your McDavid's, you might have missed the boat because his market seems to be ticking down instead of up based on the first couple of games. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. It's come to the point where McDavid fans are kind of holding on you know, to glory almost if you want to call it because they're down 2-0. Could he come back and, you know, win four games in a row, that reverse sweep? Could he get the the Oilers to win the Cup in six and seven? Because that's exactly what they need to do right now. They're in a really bad spot. Yeah, so I was taking a look at the numbers. Uh, the last PSA 10 sale of a McDavid Young Guns was – uh, just over three thousand, about thirty one hundred dollars Canadian, and that's down from the highest sale of four thousand dollars, which we saw on June sixth, just two days before the Cup final began. So right ahead of game number one, and that was when we were talking about this, right last week, last Wednesday, um, we're discussing. I think it was either on the fifth or the sixth, actually, when we had our discussion yeah. about how like this is the time to sell, not during or after. But right ahead of the playoffs, where the hype is at, is at its height, and I think a lot of people did do that. We did see, you know, a bunch of sales on Connor McDavid cards, a lot more than typical. So I think there were, were a lot of people who took advantage and moved their cards. But what I think was interesting was we saw a lot of the big boys come out and a lot of high-priced Connor McDavid cards finally hit the market. Stuff that's been sitting in, uh, not in closets, but like in uh, like lock boxes at the bank or something in people's <laughs> safes the, with the type of cards that were being sold this week. I, I went through, I found a, uh, I perused, I guess, Card Ladder, which is a great website. Um, and I looked at kind of like the top 10 sales throughout the last week since basically from the end of round three, like when we found out that they had punched their ticket to the finals until essentially like today, I guess is where I looked. And I compiled it and I have a list for you of the top 10 sales. Would you like to, would you like to see them, Anthony? Oh, I'm fired up. Let's do it. So let's bring it up here. It's a mix actually of both um uh singles and wax actually which you would imagine some people who've been sitting on wax for a little bit looking to move some of those items and that's what we have for the first item so uh sp authentic connor mcdavid year 1516 sealed hobby box went for just over three thousand dollars on june 8th another key term now a lot of these actually and it's interesting, like we talk about eBay a lot, but 
sometimes for a lot of bigger cards, people usually like to go with auction houses and you'll see most of these big ticket items actually were sold via golden auctions and they were smart. Mm -hmm. They realized, hey, the hype is right ahead of the cup final and they made sure that June 8th was the cutoff date with the 10th being puck drop date uh, for the cup final. So you'll notice a lot of these biggest sales were on June 6th, 7th, 8th. Uh, but that was kind of the uh, $3,000 for an SP Authentic hobby box, sealed hobby box, in which you could pull a uh, Connor McDavid Future Watch Auto. Nothing? You got no words? Speech? Oh, I thought you were, I didn't know you were teeing me up there. I, I mean, like you well, said. I don't know. I like just you... go back and like, uh, do you want, want this box? <laughs> I guess I could go through. I just didn't want to talk hey. for like 15, 10, 15 minutes as I give a presentation here. So hey, no, I have no, a chance I know. to I, say something. I don't know. I know, we got, I know we got lots to talk through, so that's why I wasn't sure if we were going to fly through them. But either way, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head to say that they did the right thing by selling at the anticipation peak, you know, when it kind of was the best day to sell. And like you mentioned, this one was sold on June 8th. June mm -hmm. 10th was that first puck drop. And we talked about it last week. I mean, even the week before, going back, looking two years ago when I was telling a story about when I purchased a McKinnon PSA 10, you know, the anticipation is what truly drives the price in the market. And we notice, you know, even like you mentioned, some of these big boys don't even come out of people's lock boxes or out of their basements because they don't want to sell it. And not only was last week the right time to sell but it was the right time and also you know the right price is what it seems like because usually first of all you don't see a box like this come to sale and second I've never of all, seen, you don't see it for that price either i've never seen uh, a 1516 sp authentic sealed hobby box in my life to be fair <laughs> like even <laughs> i'm trying to think even walking around <laughs> at expo i don't know i don't think Th so. this could I've honestly a, be I was gonna say this is probably the first time right now that I'm seeing like the photo of the box. I've never seen it before. <laughs> I'm actually pretty confident in that. I should have sold them actually. I do have two sealed uh 1516 series one uh oh, yeah, hobby boxes that. tucked away. I do have two sealed of those, which uh I should actually those look them up. I didn't do what they were, but all right, next what <clears throat> next one. We'll fly through these a little quicker then, actually. It makes sense to do that. So the next one here is 1516 Series 1 Young Guns Exclusives BGS 8.5. So the exclusive Young Guns out of 100 sold for $8,763 Canadian. This sale was actually June 10th. So this one, this was an eBay sale. And I bet you uh, they're, they, they might be kicking themselves hoping that they perhaps maybe sold it a, a day or two earlier and set the auction date a day or two earlier. It looks like maybe they were trying to line it up for, <laughs> you know, a, a big win after game one, but didn't necessarily happen. But 8,700 for a young guns exclusive. Um, what do you make of that price there, Anthony? I, I'm actually taken aback by that price because I don't know if it's just me when you pulled this up, what you thought, but I think this is like extremely aggressively undervalued like, really i really think that this card at this price is aggressively undervalued like think about it just coming across the show floor the x one you see a tron and you see a mcdavid young guns exclusive for eighty seven hundred dollars i mean i'm not even joking right now if i were at a card show and i saw this i think i would force myself to pick it up and the sole reason is because from doing research prior, I found that most young gun to young gun exclusives usually are within a 20, a 20 X price. So for example, if the card goes for $20 raw as a young gun, usually the young gun exclusive will go. Yeah. That seems and clear. Cuts, that seems clear cuts go for 10 X. Yeah, uh, exclusives go for 20x. That's what I found the average. I found that about six months ago, and I still find that to be true. So, based off that estimation, this is at least a $15,000 card, I'd say. So, for $8,700, I think that's an aggressive steal. Like, I think that's a steal. Yeah, well, could have been yours. Could have been yours for the low price of $8,700. Uh, next up, 
We've got the 1516 oh, UD Ice Rookie Premieres, number 299, sold for $10,902. And this one sold on June 6th on eBay uh, through Probstein, I guess, which is a, similar to like a Slab Sharks um, on eBay. Um, it's funny. Ice Premieres isn't necessarily a... I don't even know if they have it anymore. I'm thinking about it. But do. back in... I think they have it, but it's not necessarily one of the big chases like it used to be. Back no, in 1516, like pre, I don't know when when they stopped, but like the Ice Premier clear cut rookie to 99 was one of the like premier chase rookies that people needed to have in their sets. And, you know, this one is it's a BGS pristine 10, obviously, which gives it an even, you know, more of a kicker. It's 0.5 away from a black label. Um, but for nearly eleven hundred dollars, uh, you know, years later, someone finally decides to put this on auction, and they were able to get eleven hundred for it. Um, for this one here, I mean, I think that's a good price. I'll say, I'll come out and say that I don't know too much about ice premieres in the past. Looking back two years ago, I remember at the expo walking around and seeing a discrepancy in price from old ice premieres and current ice premieres because I believe I was looking at a rookie of, I don't remember who it was. It was one of the current rookies two years ago at the expo and that compared to the older ones and I realized like exactly you mentioned, the prices don't reflect like they used to and like you said, the out of 99 was one of the most desirable but then looking at current plays or it's not even close like that. Considering no. this is in a BGS 10 too, a hard card to grade, we know that we've seen it so many times with clear cuts. I feel like 10,000 is the right price. And I mean, it looked like whoever sold it, sold it at the right time as well. Yeah, absolutely. Next up, we've got another rookie as uh, I guess our first RPA that we're looking at 1516 UD premier acetate gold rookie patch auto uh, number to 10, number to 10. Not the prettiest patch, just a little bit of blue, mainly white. Um, looks like it might be like the part of the, the jersey or maybe part of the oil uh, logo or something like that, just a little tad of blue. But you get a, a, a rookie gold RPA to 10. Now, this one's raw, whereas the other cards have been graded uh, for $11,610. Once again, so selling before puck drop of the cup final on June 6th. What do you think of this price? I mean, right time. We know that, like we mentioned, there's a couple of things I noticed with this card right off the bat, even from looking previously at this set in general. First off, I know that these patches are event use, which I mean, you know, not notorious in the hobby to be, to be very sought after. That's not even me saying it. That's just, you know, how prices reflect. And especially to come from UD Premier, a very popular and, you know, if we want to say desirable set in Upper Deck, it's an expensive price. On Card Auto kind of helps its cause and the card being out of 10 as well to reflect that price. But for a UD Premier out of 10 rookie RPA of Connor McDavid to be event used and only a two color patch when it is out of 10, I'm a little bit disappointed in that aspect. But $11,000 for one of the better sets for an RPA of Connor McDavid. I mean, you can't really go wrong with that, especially picking up right before the cup final. And we keep going and going up and we got, so this one's interesting, actually. This technically is not Ooh, a rookie nice. card, but it technically is a rookie card. So I, this is one that does require a bit of conversation between us here. So this is technically from 1920 buybacks, but, what was bought back is the actual 1516 young guns and then it's yeah. autographed and this one is auto to 25 and then it's sent out in the 1920 buybacks which was a great great uh set back in the day great product uh, they don't really have it anymore for whatever reason i don't know why they they stopped giving it to us now it's like oh we'll we'll give you a clear cut instead it's like ah buybacks is way better yeah <laughs> but anyways um, do you consider this a rookie? Like it's, it's, it's not cause it's like re-released in 1920, but I do believe like they get 25 legitimate young gun rookie cards and then get them signed. I believe that, well, that was going to be my back work. That, that was going to be my question to you because I've seen these cards around and 
like I think you were going to say at the, off the top that this card was a little bit cheaper than you expected. I don't know if that's the route you were looking for, but I've seen that some of these buybacks to be notoriously cheaper than I expected. So that was kind of my first question. Is this an actual young gun that was signed? Was it made again? Because I know that on the back, as you could see on the right side, it does have the authenticity. Is that a part of the card? Was it added? Was it reprinted? I, I genuinely don't know. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm not sure because I, I'll say this. I've gotten buybacks like randomly inserted into products. I've gotten I've gotten like buybacks and it'll have, you know, something similar to this. It'll be on the back, but it'll be sleeved like you get it, it comes sleeved. It's already inside the pack that way. But so you have, you know, the whatever pack it is. In my case, it was like a Johnny Goudreau signed card, uh, signed rookie card. And then it was a, a buyback and then hand signed. It was like just a regular base card, but hand signed. And then on the back was one of these. This card has been signed and blah, blah, blah. Gives it the authenticity. And it was technically two different cards i can't tell if this is two different ones but it says certificate of authenticity on this so i believe these are two different cards these aren't the same so oh, you know what you back. actually are right i think you're right yeah. i think it is so it's not the back it's just so this comes by itself i'm sure if we could see the back it'll be it'll look just like a regular mcdavid card and then this is the certificate of authenticity right here authenticating that yeah this card is obviously the one out of 25 that we say it is so they come together and then he split it up and sent them both the back for whatever I'm reason tr i'm trying to do some quick research looking right now and I can't pull it up, unfortunately. But on Slab Sharks, there's a Leon Dreisaitl out of 29 Young Guns buyback. And it is part of one card. So it is one card. So I don't know. This is from 1516. Could be different. So <laughs> I, I don't know if there could be a discrepancy. I will say, though, that this does feel a little bit cheap considering the auto is so bold, so nice and I mean, it's already in a slab. It's already graded a 9.5, which we don't see usually with these McDavid Young Guns. We know they're kind of tough to grade, and you're going to add on top of that it's, what, out of 25, I believe, and then back at auto 10. I mean, it can't get much sweeter than that. It's a great-looking card. We know McDavid Young Guns, how they look, how sweet they look. I feel like we could say this is a little bit undervalued. Possibly. Possibly. It, it depends if you look at it as a rookie or not. Right. If if you look at it as a rookie, then yeah, I think yeah. it's it's undervalued. But if you don't and you view it as like a fourth year card, then, then maybe it's not that undervalued. You know, a fourth year auto I, that's twelve thousand dollars, right? Fourth year McDavid auto yeah. twenty five. So it, it just depends how you look at it, right? I, I I'd say me personally, the way that I'll look at it is as a fourth year card because that's exactly when it was released. I mean, I can't really consider that. A rookie card i just can't do it exactly all right next up we're taking a look at what is a legitimate rookie card oh, yeah. a 2015 16 spx jersey auto number to 399 uh 10 10 on both the card and the auto and these are tough to to, to 10 they're tough to gem because they're thick jersey cards so getting tens on uh, on those are, are always difficult um Goes for thirteen thousand four hundred and sixty-eight Canadian dollars. Sold on June eighth, which was also part of that big golden auction. So I'm assuming there was like one guy because I think of the of the ten sales that I grabbed, I think like seven, yeah. six or seven of them were from golden auctions. I don't know if it was multiple collectors or like one collector who said this is the time to move my to move my stuff. But uh, that yeah. one ends up going for. Uh, oh, just over $13,000 Canadian. Um, we can kind of rip through some of these a little bit more. There's one that you like. I bet you you're oh, a big that's fan beautiful. of this card. That's, that's a grail beautiful. card right there, right? We're, we're looking at a grail card right now. 1516 oh, no. SP Authentic Future Watch Auto, uh, number to 999 PSA 10 Pop 83. Uh, and it sold for $20,010. Canadian on June 7th via eBay with Probstein. Um, so again, before the cup final, I'm curious if that would go for uh, how much less it would go for if it were to say sell tomorrow, as opposed 
to uh, pre-cut final if, if if you know the next sale will have a, a big decrease i guess afterwards but this is a grail card for sure i mean i feel like a card like this it's not like the young gun where the price is so consistent because you usually don't see sales of a mcdavid future watch psa 10 i can go out on a limb and say that without having any prior knowledge of needing to look up that card because i've never had to look up a comp of this card because i would never be able to buy a card like this at the moment but you know, well, I'm pretty. Let me confident. ask you this. Let me ask yeah. you this. What was yeah. when we were at the expo? I remember you stopped and you asked me. It, it was an Ovechkin. Was that a PSA ten or BGS nine five? Oh, SPL it was uh, like it, ten grand or something. It was a. Uh, it was a BGS nine five Ovechkin. Okay. okay. Future Watch True Gem for like seventy seven fifty, I think, and McDavid's was like a thousand dollars more than that, and. I think we had a good conversation about it, and we were like, how is it possible that Ovechkin goes for less than McDavid? How is that possible? I don't know, but apparently both are going, yeah, like less than McDavid. So uh, <laughs> I, I saw actually there's a PSA there's a PSA 9 sale that went for about, I think it was more than that, though. I thought it was closer to like 12000 or something like that. No, it was, it was under ten k, man. It was It was cheap. It was cheap. I remember. It, I don't remember the exact number, but it was under 10k. There's a PSA 9 sale of the Future Watch Auto that also sold for about 9,000. So the PSA 10 uh, doubling in sales of the PSA 9, which makes sense, I would say. Um, yeah, twenty thousand dollar card now for PSA 10 Future Watch Auto Connor McDavid. Next up, this is a big one. This is one that we went oh, back and forth uh, about a little bit. So this is the 2015-16 SP game used rookie draft day marks. Um, all autographed, all Beckett. You've got five, nine, five Beckett's and then two nines on the I and one of the D's. Um, sold for $27,779 on June 8th. Part of that big golden um, sale, obviously. I don't know how many of these are... are around like full mcdavid nameplates because here's the interesting thing these are number two i believe is that 35 i want to say these are number to 35 these plates which means there's only 35 d's also and you have to get two of them for the full nameplate so realistically yeah. there's only a possible say 17 plates that can even be put together of those 17 who acquired a D, how many of them were able to get the whole set? So I have no idea how many full McDavid draft day mark sets exist. Um, but for what could possibly be a one of one or a one of not very many, uh, uh, 27,000 seems like kind of, kind of low, kind of low, I thought. For a rookie auto, I, I know that these are manufactured patches, and that might be, I guess, the biggest reason why. But draft day marks is a massive, massive rookie card, and they sell for pretty big money. So I'm, mm -hmm. I, I was a little surprised at how low this went. I thought it for sure would be like a thirty-five ish thousand dollar card, card oh, yeah. set, the nameplate. It's it's one of those things where you'll probably, you know, you've never seen it before and you'll probably never see it again come up for sale. So maybe That's the buyer I mean. thought he was interested in it. He's been looking for it. I just don't, it's very weird because this seems like a very niche thing to sell, especially for that price, because I have seen people sell the full nameplate. So for someone to spend that amount of money on a very popular player, such as McDavid. And I mean, that's extremely rare. Like you mentioned out of 35, which I did go back to double check. Wouldn't you think that if someone was looking for, you know, a set like this for the McDavid nameplate, they wouldn't, they would have been able to get in contact with the individual that was selling it. I mean, it's not like it's a McDavid it. young guns, exclusive PSA 10 that you see pop up and, you know, everyone knows what it is. Everyone would want it. It's like, not everyone would want this. Not everyone would pay this what? much. I mean, oh, I would. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You'd rather. Yeah, okay. You'd rather, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? I have no idea I what you're think... talking about right now. This, this I, there is not many cards that you could offer me outside. Of, like, you give me a full nameplate. There's not many cards that I would turn down over this. 
I, at all. I think my main argument is coming from, you know, I feel like it's a very niche thing to collect. I don't know how to explain it, but I've seen people sell it. I've seen people sell it at shows and no one really goes up and says, you know, I'm looking for name plates today, especially for big names because these are expensive cards and because how much of a premium there is for them when you have the entire set, not only the entire set, but graded by the same company in nine or above grade. So for me, what I'm saying is if you're having someone that's ready to spend $30, thousand dollars on cards this rare wouldn't you think that they would have been able to go out and actually seek who has full nameplate get in contact off ebay i don't know i mean it's a conversation well, it wasn't ebay it was golden it was golden auctions or or go i mean any online resources where i'm coming from no because golden you the reason like why you go with golden and the reason why you do this is because you usually get more like usually they have they have the contacts that want this type of stuff they yeah. know who's looking for this so they know exactly who the big fish are that's going to get it and they're like all right hey we're putting not basically you know the 15 people in the world who can afford this that are willing to buy this all in one little bidding pool and they're going to yeah. bid for it as opposed yeah. to like individually trying to seek that's it out awesome. and you know that that's the whole point of what go did you see the golden um that that the netflix special that golden had no did it come out i actually got the notification yesterday did well it yeah it's out? been out it's been out for a while i the, i think the oh. second season probably coming out soon but the first season yeah. been out for probably it, about a year now I, go watch no, it it's actually really cool no i i watched the first season it was great but i yesterday last night i got a notification for season two but i never check if, oh, nice. if it came out maybe, maybe it was like a promo or something but i saw it on my phone actually yesterday so I'll have to take a look. But anyways, I want to make one more outlandish statement a little bit because you might be surprised by this. But do you think that they would have gotten more money for this set if the photo was taken in a row rather than two layers to it? Like full <sighs> Nick Day You know what I mean? I feel, yeah. like it was a, I feel like it was a mistake not to put it on like one single row. I feel like that was a mistake. So I would imagine that they they did both and probably realized that like because of how long the plate is you would have had to take the the, sh the screenshot i guess from, like really high and it yeah. probably ended up becoming a little grainier so in order to get closer and have more of a, a clearer view of everything you probably had to yeah. like shorten it so you could get a little closer to it i yeah. i would imagine that was the reasoning for it um I would hope that was the reasoning for it, and it wasn't I mean, just a complete I, oversight. <laughs> I don't think it was too much of an oversight. More, I think they probably tried it. It didn't work. It didn't yeah. fit, and they ended up going yeah. with it. But I just feel like it was slightly a little bit of a drop ball with this. Well, I know um, I've seen – so at the expo, there's a guy there. I think he's from – Oh, I know. He's the autograph guy. Montreal. Yeah, the autograph guy. Autograph he's like in the hallway. Yeah. yeah, and he's got he's got a, a full Matthews plate. He believes it's the only complete plate in the world. He's been he's that's what he thinks, and he says he values it at fifty k. So the fact that McDavid's only went for twenty seven, twenty eight, we'll say if you want to round up, seems yeah. a little light. I mean, he may be yeah. a little high on his ask of fifty k. But the fact that McDavid went for half seems a little light. That's all. Yeah, I mean, I guess that will be for him to value. But based off, you know, comps and comparing it off the top of our heads, we know McDavid's a little bit cheaper than Matthews. But at the end of the day, like you said, it could be the only one in the world. So, hey, you could value it at even 55K, 60K, 70K. I, we don't know. Hey, but McDavid, Did you say McDavid's cheaper than Matthews? No, Matthews is cheaper than McDavid. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought I heard you say the opposite. It, I, I could have worded it wrong, but we, sorry. We yeah. do know that Matthews is cheaper than McDavid. It's just yeah. we can almost say he's half of it because, what, the Young Guns is 500 and then McDavid's 1,000. I don't know yeah. what a Matthews nameplate would go for, but one thing I do know is in Toronto, it would definitely be a sought-after uh, sought after commodity. Yeah. All right, let's keep it going. Keep it rolling here. Uh, so you can get a sealed case of the cup, which has six boxes in it, six tins of the cup for $44,615. Uh, 
and try and pull some McDavid RPAs uh, out of the cup. That would be <laughs> that would be awesome. Imagine if you bought this and you end up with like his exquisite RPA, or you end up with uh, the the shield, the McDavid shield out of the cup. Man, wouldn't that be something? Uh, but another one of those golden auction items that went for for pretty big money there. Um, the next one is the highest selling card of the week. Uh, what do you think it was? Do you have, it's have any guesses? It is a card. card. One <laughs> single card was the highest sale. It has to be something from the cup. It's either something from the cup or it's the Young Guns exclusive like PSA 10 or even like a McDavid Beckett Black Young Guns, maybe. No. No, no way that that would be 50k no I chance know. that that would be that much money but it was you're right the first time it was uh oh, okay cup exquisite yeah. rpa to 97 psa 10 so psa That's 10 true. exquisite collection rookie patch auto beautiful patch number to 97 uh and a psa 10 this sold on alt which was a little interesting to me that it's sold on alt of all things. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you want to consider this a true sale or not, I, that's up to you, but it sold for $53,820 Canadian. Uh, and that's was the, the number one selling Connor McDavid card uh, over the last week and a half, ever since he punched his ticket into the Stanley cup finals. So that's the, that's the big boy that was sold this week. I mean, it's a great looking card. It's a great patch. It's a great auto. I wish they graded the auto as well and get that double 10 10. That would have been sweet. But yeah, I like how you mentioned too, it was sold on on alt. So could we be a little skeptical if, you know, the buyer paid for it? If it was a legitimate sale? I mean, yeah, it, that's exactly what comes from it when you don't sell from some of these bigger auction houses. So we'll see what is in store for down the down the road. You know, if there's more of a story to this sale, but at the end of the day, I'm proud of the hobby for the past week. And like you said, that's some big money, almost what $250,000 in total, just off that top 10 on only McDavid. We're not even talking about dry settle, Bouchard, Chuck, Bobrovsky, which I know you want to get into, but this is just yep. McDavid. And, and that's what we were expecting, right? We were expecting the big boy McDavid cards to come out this week, and and it happened. And and I, I these aren't necessarily the top ten sales overall. These were like the top sale of that unique card. So, like I mentioned, yeah. there were you know many sales of like PSA ten, or there was many sales of uh, yeah, like the Young Guns. There was many sales of the Future Watch autos, whether it was like a BGS nine five, a Beckett nine, whatever it may be. So there were multiple sales that were in the range of like thousands of dollars on top of this. Um, and then obviously lower as well. Uh, but these were kind of the top, top sales uh, of those individual cards. We'll say, but yeah, lots of money spent on Connor McDavid over the last little bit here, uh, which, which I think we all kind of expected to, uh, to see. So that was fun. That was good to go through that and take a look at some of the top selling McDavid cards um, so the hype obviously no longer with McDavid though, because as we mentioned, the the young guns was selling for four thousand thirty-six for a PSA 10 on June 6th is now about thirty one hundred dollars for that same exact card. So almost a thousand dollar drop in less than a week. So uh where has the hype gone, Anthony? Hey, it's going in net. I think it's going in net down to uh the Florida Panthers. What are we thinking? Yeah, I mean, Bobrovsky, the way that he's played over the last uh, last couple of games, he's at this point the betting favorite too to win the uh, Conn Smythe. Now it's it's negative odds, so it's it's pretty strong odds of him winning the Conn Smythe. Uh, his last sale of his PSA ten Young Guns from 2010-11 class uh, sold for two hundred and forty one dollars which is up from $141 at the start of the playoffs. So that's a 71% growth um, from the start of the playoffs till today, essentially his last sale. It's a pop 106, so not a whole lot. Not many uh, PSA 10 young guns out there of, of Officer Bob. So uh, you will have to pay up a little bit if you, if you want that. But I think both Anthony and I would, Strongly suggest uh, wait a little bit because these prices will certainly go back down, uh, as we we all know. 
Um, the raw sales too actually surprising me going up. And I saw one as high as 90, but like anywhere from 50 to 90 dollars. I'm seeing mass variance in sales here um for the raw young guns. But for a card that could have been had it for 15 bucks all season long, now you can't get it for under 50. So just goes to show, man, the hype, the hobby hype is real and it pushes sales so so much and right now that hobby hype is certainly on sergey bobrovsky i mean i think i saw like last week bobrovsky young guns a bobrovsky young guns raw sell for like 25 bucks and it was probably like two weeks ago and i was saying to myself like doesn't that feel a little bit cheap considering what he was going for last year and there must have been a massive spike just within the last week considering especially obviously game one shutout in the stanley cup final ridiculous performance we don't have to get into it much more just because that was insane i've seen people on twitter say was that one of the best um i believe north american athletic performances of all time was the wording and i was looking at it on my phone i was like you might be right because Uh, he played unreal american he played unreal and maybe it could have been a little bit of a recency bias and obviously a hockey fan bias. There's been lots of great sports performances, but to see Bobrovsky's prices finally start to reflect how well he's been playing is a great spot for the hobby. And you know what? That's ex- it's especially what we want to see from the hobby. You know, players play great and then their, their market increases accordingly. Won't last, uh, won't last long though. So if you're looking to sell, sell now, if you're looking to buy, hold off, that's my, <laughs> Ultimate advice to everybody out there uh, watching and listening. All right, let's get to some hobby news. Uh, quite a bit going on in the in the hobby world. This is kind of where we're going to get into our discussion about grading too, because last week Gemrate, which is uh, a website that I have now familiarized myself with, and it is a fantastic site that uh, gives you really deep, in depth insight on um, grading and where the state of grading is. They have legitimate like grading reports every single month with breakdowns of everything that you could possibly ask for from you know they 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 compile the the top four grading companies uh beckett psa sgc and uh cgc actually is now considered among them um and they compile all their numbers together and all their pop reports together essentially and they spit out all of this data which is all readily and easily available for you. So I spent a good couple hours looking over this data. Um, so they had a record-breaking month in the grading companies. Graded 1.78 million cards in the month of May between those four companies alone. So that's not including like Mint or Tag or Arena Club or or whatever ragtag, you know, random mom, pa shop, uh, KSA, you know, grading company that's out there. That's just those big four, 1.78 million cards in the month of May. 1.36 million, that's 76% of that number, were done by PSA alone. PSA is king. It's it's. There's no debate about that anymore. Yeah, it feels like there's just been, within the last 15 years, a massive switch, almost like a flip going from what used to be Beckett as, like you mentioned, the king, to now PSA grabbing 76%, I believe you said. That's just utterly utterly ridiculous, considering I believe they opened up a new shop, they opened up a new site in Florida. I got an email just a couple days ago that they opened up a new uh Re, uh, sorry, sort facility where shipments will be sent to. PSA is definitely dialed in right now. They've developed their app to an extraordinary, you know, transition of user friendly um, resources over the past year. Just me personally, I've used the app way more. I've been, you know, very pleased as a customer of PSA and a collectors club member with how well they've treated me, you know, people helping with, you know, the past year of grading cards of them and i feel like it's only up from here too for them so i got a question for you though what about the recent news their update in their uh charging policy where now cards that are valued from 500 to a thousand are no longer 
graded at $39.99, but are now graded at $74.99 USD. Do you think that was a, a, a good call? Like, where do you sit with that news? I mean, like, is that going to impact their bottom line? Like, are, are, are graders going to maybe, because there's not as much margin there, especially if you get a PSA 9 on some of this stuff, um, will that maybe push certain graders and hobbyists to other grading companies because of it? I mean, it could be the start of it. I want to see what happens in the next month, the next two months with just exactly what this price change, how it will influence, you know, how many cards people grade on a monthly basis, how well they do, how their sales do. Like you said, $79.99, I believe was the number, or $74.99. That's a massive yeah. increase, more than double, I believe. Tax or just, USD. Just, yeah, just about double from what it used to be. So we'll see how legitimate that becomes in the next couple months because I don't know how much longer PSA can hold increasing that price by that much without seeing you know negative a negative impact in their volume. So maybe they want to do it on purpose. Who knows? Maybe they don't want as many people sending cards in so that they could catch up. I don't know, but that's a massive increase and there has to be reason behind it. Uh, I, I don't know the answer to uh, to to the reasoning for the increase, but what I what I can tell you is that uh, through the first ten days of June, per gem rate, again, great website, uh, <laughs> they've already graded over three hundred thousand cards. So wow. <laughs> they are they are well on their way to uh, so, to, to yeah. you know, grading another million cards this month. Just to do some like quick math off like my phone because i'm curious so you said three hundred thousand cards let's say even on average they're getting what like thirty dollars us a card that's nine million dollars us i mean that they're charging that are you getting way more than that i would you think think? on average thirty dollars us per card i mean think about a lot of the people who are paying for like one day two day turnarounds that are you know doing more than bulk service too lots of people especially for some of the bigger products too i don't know even just doing these numbers like they're making a, a, a bleep ton crazy. of money bleep ton of money and that was 100%. just in the last 10 days that was in the last 10 days that's ridiculous yeah. i mean like you said psa is king and those numbers that just showed up on my iphone absolutely back that up and keep in mind psa also owns SGC, which is at this point, like weirdly the second best grading company right now. It feels like in terms of like resale value and, and in terms of um, usage grading uh, also considered the, the second best, like why well, I got the numbers here. SGC did 174,000 uh, cards in the month of May and BGS did just 59,000. So SGC literally had triple the business that BGS had. I mean, that's so. crazy. It, it, it's bad. Like it kind of begs the question if BGS is in trouble because through the past couple of years, we've seen such a drastic drop in not only mm. people sending the cards to Beckett, but even when you go to a show and you pick up a Beckett card of a young gun, I mean, that's what we're accustomed to. But even looking at, other grading companies compared to Beckett, there's not that, you know, tight knit fight for what's the true, you know, gem mint that you want to get your card in to hold in your collection or even to resell it. Like talking about McDavid Youngins, we've seen the 9.5 go for about what, 15 to 1700, while the PSA 10 has gone for three to 4,000. So almost double in value considering what they both say gem mint. It's a very bad spot that. Beckett's in right now. Yeah, Be- Beckett's there, and uh, they're in a tough spot for sure. I mean, he, Beckett used to be king in hockey too. Like, I remember when I first got into the hobby back in the early to mid two thousands. Like, Beckett was everything. Like that. That's where people sent their young guns to. That's where Canadians and and the hockey hobby graded with mainly Beckett. Um, that's why if you go and you look at the pop counts of you know, Matthews or McDavid or Crosby or Ovi, and you look at their pop counts, they've got a hell of a lot more Beckett gems than they do PSA gems. 
Um, and that's the reason. Then there's been a massive shift in the last, I don't know, three, four years, I guess, since the COVID pandemic. And BGS has gone way down and everyone's like just it's just a full agreement. If you want to get resale value for your cards, you got to go with PSA. And everybody no. kind of took that little group think mentality. And now everyone's grading with PSA. Even if you're looking at hockey, barely do you see Beckett stuff. Like if you look at, you know, Bedards and you look at how many PSA submissions compared to like Beckett submissions, it's night and day to what McDavid was and what Matthews was and what Crosby was. It was like flip flopped. So that's I mean, another thing that's, you know, hockey's kind of, or Beckett is in trouble when they lost a lot of that hockey market over the last couple of years. They're down one of the biggest year over year, by the way, from last May. Crazy. One of the biggest indicators is when you see people, I mean, even people like myself that will go ahead and crack, you know, a Beckett slab so that it would become a PSA slab. That is one of the biggest tells of all time. And you don't see many well, people crack well, PSA slabs to go to other companies unless it is maybe a PSA nine and they're shooting for a BGS nine five, which some would say is right in between that nine and the PSA 10. And it's not even that it's not even between anymore. It's definitely closer to the PSA nine than it is to, to, to the 10 now at this point. But I would say yeah, this, uh, um, I would say this though, people aren't necessarily buying Beckett nine fives for themselves most people who are buying Beckett nine fives nowadays are buying it to crack to send to try and 10 because yeah. they think it's got a better option than a PSA nine crack. So like, that's not good. <laughs> like all the no. nine five slabs are getting cracked. So now, even if you're walking up and down at show floors, what used to be in the nine five slab is now either in a PSA nine or a PSA 10 slab, just the way that it yeah, is true. Uh, when it comes that's to true. them. So, yeah, Beckett's Beckett's uh, Beckett is definitely in trouble. Um, I do have some stats for you when it comes to Connor Bedard's young gun. Are you ready for him? Let's hear it. So Connor Bedard's PSA plop count. Keep in mind, Connor Bedard's PSA uh, Connor Bedard's young gun came out ninety eight days ago. So in 98 oh. days. Do you know what else? Already... Do you know? Weird stat of the day. Weird stat of the day. Connor Bedardsis. Uh wow. jersey number match. Look at that. Yep. There we uh, go. PSA PSA 10 pop. 3,497. Three away from 3,500 PSA 10s at a 46% oh. gem rate. 46%. That's crazy. That's actually crazy. You want to know the scariest part about this, though? EPAC hasn't dropped yet. Oh, How I didn't many even think about are, it. Yeah, are our gonna young come. guns are going are gonna to get opened up and sent in through EPAC. That's going to send this pop count oh. to another stratosphere. I, I, I bet you by... By the time Series 1 of next year, of 24-25 comes out, I'll bet you Connor Bedard is the highest graded hockey card, PSA 10 graded hockey card in existence. That's my prediction. I wonder what the other card that would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that, would it be with like the, maybe that Yager? Isn't there like a popular Yager well, rookie? <laughs> Funny enough, Kirill Kaprizov, has like oh that one too, yeah. 50 100 pop count for PSA 10. Jack Hughes is Crazy. starting to get up there too. Yeah, He's we talked cool. about that I think we, weeks ago. We, we had a conversation about that. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that was like a year ago. We talked about that. It's only yeah, gone maybe, maybe. Since. I don't know. It feels um, like weeks ago. So Bedard is uh, Bedard. I think is going to challenge those particular fellas. And the crazy part is, is those cards have been out for four or five years, but are less than a hundred days right now. And he's already up basically at 3,500 pop 10. Oof, li like you said, it is crazy. I mean, I, I'd be a little bit worried considering how many there are. Like we talked about the junk wax era and how many cards were printed so long ago. Like have we not learned from our mistakes? Could this be another site of that? I don't know, but 
We, we could be headed into it. Here's some heading into it. I think we're there, buddy. Here's some <laughs> other stats for you when it comes to this card in particular. Um, so the Carter Bedard base young gun was the fifth most graded PSA card in the month of May and the third most graded Beckett card in the month of May of all cards, not hockey, all cards, all sports, TCG, whatever fifth most graded unique card of all PCA submissions. PSA submissions. That, that's nuts because you see, even on Gem, right? I was taking a quick look while you were talking how many TCG cards were graded. That's ridiculous uh, to see that. <laughs> but I didn't know. I didn't know that it was that much. Dude. But I mean, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, like 32% of that 1.78 million was TCG cards. Um, that's crazy. But yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's kind of wild. I, I will say this, like if we, if we want to get into that existential conversation of if we're in a junk wax era, junk slab era, whatever you want to say, I will, like, I, I do believe we are in terms of like a larger scale, but I think hockey a little less so than the others. I think hockey yeah. is a little bit less upper deck. Definitely has not printed as much as like, what panini and what tops and fanatics has printed um like you look at victor wembenyama i actually literally tweeted this out like a couple hours ago victor uh, wembenyama it's it's insane dude victor wembenyama had almost 50,000 cards graded in the month of may himself himself 50,000 cards he's had 178,000 cards graded by psa Holy crap. Like, and his his rookie year is still ongoing. Yeah, that was more. That's more than total Wayne Gretzky cards. More than total Steph Curry cards. Giannis Antetokounmpo, Josh Allen. Like, it is insane where things are at with basketball. Football's you know pretty high up there as well with with the way that they overprint Prism. Hockey's yeah. a little bit more subdued, so I think we can. You know, I think it's because honestly, hockey also is more so driven by collectors as opposed to these other ones, which are big flipping markets. So I think yeah. that kind of helps, definitely helps, in my opinion. Yeah, that many cards for Wemba Nyana. Like, I get it, and I think I pronounced his name wrong. I get it. He had a great rookie season, but like you mentioned too, there's still cards from his rookie year to be released still, and people are still going to grade them even more. Like, Looking a year from now, I feel like this could be a could it be a number that is doubled? Like, could we see a double amount of what three hundred thousand graded cards in Wembenyama? And he's one of those players too that you see him notoriously famous throughout the world. Obviously, not from North America, so does that make him even more famous? You know, outside of Dude. the U.S., I I'd say so. Dude, Victor Wembenyama is a chase. In the new fanatic in the new top series two baseball, he has a chase card. Oh, he he has card a, he, really? Yeah, yeah. He had a he because he did he did like a first pitch, I think, in Yankee Stadium. First pitch, so yeah, yeah they're yeah, making yeah. it a super short print chase card, and he autographed 25 of them. So it's numbered to 25 <laughs> autograph card of Victor Wembanyama in top series two baseball, flagship baseball. Yeah, you're gonna have a Wembanyama chase card. Just goes to show. It's 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 an absolutely insane. Um, and I'm I'm looking at items that have been graded like month over month, like a a, a bar chart, I suppose, and it's just going up like this. Like back in March of 2021, May of 2021, you're seeing like 540 thousand cards, 612 thousand cards, 508 thousand cards, and now you're getting one point three four whatever it was that psa just had 1.36 for psa it's like double from t the spring of 2021 where we thought was where the hockey the the card market was booming it's yeah. gone way up <laughs> since then so it's interesting where the market is at right now it definitely definitely is interesting it makes you kind of 
sit back and think for a little bit. What are we going to do? How are things going to unfold over the next uh, over the next little bit? Yeah, it makes me a little bit optimistic, too, because even like you mentioned, PSA has been growing so much. They've opened up more facilities. So although it could be a little bit scary for what's headed in the future, I mean, hey, I'm looking forward to it. More facilities, but that just means that they're pumping out more of these slabs into the market. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, I mean, I'd say a bad thing in that sense, but a good thing in the sense of, you know, they're looking to grow the business and even the acquisition of SGC as well. Are they just swallowing a competitor or else are they looking to maybe grow their company, you know, make it even bigger, learn from their competitors, what they do strategies. So, Hey, I don't work at PSA, but I do know that I submit to them and I I've, I've loved how it's been as a collector's club member in the past year. Yeah. So, interesting thing to kind of keep an eye on the the market in general i guess uh when it comes to to graded cards all right really quickly um i was looking for an upper deck extended checklist because this product is supposed to come out literally next week and i was hoping that there would be a checklist out and we could uh take a look at some of the top rookies that are going to be in there couldn't find it could not find the checklist it's not out yet which is ridiculous the fact that we're seven days away from release day and they don't have the checklist out of, of the top chases is, is outrageous. Or even like some of the, the you know, uh, big players that are going to be in it. <clears throat> it's crazy. Um, we do know that Logan Cooley and Adam Fantilli are going to be in there. And I, I do recall a, a few years ago, I, it was a big conversation. I think it was either the first year they put out extended or maybe the second year they put out extended. There was like a drop dead date in which they were. Uh, able to get guys into the box. And I believe it was something like mid-February. If you had debuted after that mark, then you weren't going to be able to get into extended and they were going to use you as a series one hold over the following year. So I guess if we're trying to guess who could potentially be in series uh, extended series. So guys who debuted before February, but were not in series one and two, couple of names that uh, kind of stuck out to me here, Anthony. Matthew Savoy, the Buffalo Sabres. Yearly Coolidge of the Buffalo Sabres. Josh Waugh of the Montreal Canadiens. Olin Zellweger of the Anaheim Ducks. Martin Pospisil of the Calgary Flames. Brennan Othman of the New York Rangers. And Jesper Wallstadt of the Minnesota Wild. All players who technically did play an NHL game, so are eligible to get a Young Guns pre prior to February 1st. Um, again, just speculating the guys who could be there. Maybe they want to hold on to some of these as series one chases for next year. I don't know, but do any of those names kind of stick out to you as some secondary chases? I mean, the biggest one, and I'll say it for myself is Brendan Othman because I was collecting his cards almost, I think it was like two years ago when his team Canada stuff came out. And I remember watching him when he played for the Don Mills flyers years ago, he went on to win, I believe it was the OHL Cup when it was not only was him. Shane but Wright was with him. Shane too, Wright, Wright as well was yeah. on the team. And I believe there was, I think Brand Clark was also on that team. So they yeah. were just loaded up. So for me personally, that's a name that sticks out. I don't think he'll be too much of an expensive, you know, sought after young guy. I'd say he'll probably cool down to that $5 to $10 range, probably starting out at 25 But that's a guy that I definitely have my eyes on. Another one, like you mentioned, too, is um, Matthew Savoy, a great player that I watched in the World Juniors. Yuri Coolidge, like these are all good names that if they're in extended, I feel like extended could be, you know, maybe a ripping opportunity. And you know me, I don't rip a lot, but when you see even Zellweger, Cooley, and Fantilli maybe being in extended, you might see me buy even a case. I don't know, seven days in a week from now, we will definitely know the checklist will be, but. Maybe I'll have a case in my hand like this next week. We'll see. And the Bedsy, the Bedsy uh, Young Guns canvas. Oh, no, I, I don't it. want it. No, I'll take it. If I, if I pull canvas. it, yeah, if, if I pull it, I'll be uh, giving it away. No, I won't. I'll buy it that. off you for, for 10 <laughs> bucks. I'll give you 10 bucks for it. 10 bucks. Nah, take, take it for fine. Take it for fine. I don't want it. <laughs> um, all right. Well, neither of us really had it. Well, this is usually where we do show and tell time, where usually we take a look at, you know, some of the things that we have, like our pickups of the week. 
neither of us were really in the in in the buying mode this week. If we didn't get much, uh, get up to much when it came to the hobby and and pickups. Uh, did you grab anything uh, this weekend or throughout the week? Did you sell anything cool? Like you got anything to to fill in this 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 time slot that we usually have here for a little? <laughs> I mean, no shows for me in the past week. I don't think there was anything. Like we mentioned, there was only the one individual show all the way in out in Detroit we talked about. So nothing local for me. There, there was a Woodstock I did, show. However, you know, forgot to. There was oh, a there Woodstock was. show. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know. That's still. Which is actually cool. a pretty good show. I've been there a couple. I, I've been there a couple times, I believe twice. The guy that runs the show is really great. He used to come to the St. Catherine shows as well. Really nice guy. And he just recently in the past year started taking control of that. So if you are actually in Woodstock for that show, it's a great show. I've been there a couple times. But like you mentioned, I sold one cool card that I want to find a quick photo of. I'll be able to get it quickly. Something I wasn't really interested in selling, but unfortunately last night playing beer league hockey, and yes, I do play beer league hockey because I do enjoy hockey, I snapped my stick, and which means I need to buy a new hockey stick. So I messaged a guy that was interested in my David Juracek Young Guns exclusive jersey number, which for people that know me, I do have a lot of Juracek Young Guns. I think I'm up to like 70 or 80 just raw young guns very random but this was a big piece of the collection and he was interested and i feel like he gave me a nice offer so i ended up moving this for 180 dollars it is jersey number 55 out of 100 nice card i i'm not happy i sold it i think down the road i might regret it but i feel like that was a pretty cool uh cool sell to wrap up my week yeah yeah it's pretty good uh you got a decent number on that i would say you're a check yeah. good good player i think columbus not the strongest um market i guess we could say so i think you did pretty well on that the only and thing that i guess i, I could say that's like go ahead I, I was only gonna say yeah i feel like the number was good the only thing that i noticed and saw and saw comp wise was for 130 dollars for a regular whatever number young and exclusive so i said you know what jersey number obviously a little bit of a you know, boost in price and 130, 180. I felt, you know, pretty confident that I'm getting a good number right now. We'll see what that looks like in the future. But as you were saying, um, yeah, I, I, the only thing that I got, uh, I actually picked it up today at a garage sale. It wasn't a card, but I did oh, I find something. That. What's that? Oh, you I saw, saw it on you, Instagram? I saw it or Instagram, yeah. Yeah, I got, uh, this Toronto Maple Leafs uh, collector's edition, but 10 great Leafs and their most memorable games. It's literally a 10 disc DVD set of uh, like basically the 10 best playoff games um, from Leafs throughout their franchise history, stemming all the way back to, you know, Bobby Bond and Red Kelly when they won the Stanley cup for the Maple Leafs back in, a long time ago, the 60s, 67, <laughs> obviously the last time that happened. Uh, you've got Lanny McDonald in 78. Legend. Uh, legend. You've got Matt Sundin against the Senators back in 01. I don't even think you were born at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Roberts. I do remember like this Gary Roberts and Curtis Joseph games here from, from 2002. Those are, uh, those are a couple of ones that are in here as well. So, you know. Some some memories that even I remember, and even some that uh, that'll be kind of new to me, I suppose. But I thought that was a pretty cool thing. I picked it up. It was only like a couple of bucks. I'm like, yeah, sure, yeah. why not? You know, one day maybe I'll I'll you know watch some of these. I've never actually watched the game from '67 when they won the Stanley Cup. So it's like, yeah, cool. Yeah, that'd be a cool little thing. Uh, cool to watch. And then even if I wanted to, you know, sell it, flip it, flipper's life. I think I could get you know, 10 or 15, 20 bucks or something like that from. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that seems pretty cool. Even for like someone that wanted to buy it for a rainy day and spend, I don't know how long they are. And I assume over 25 minutes combine that all together. That's a good hour, two hour watch. I mean, it sounds like fun. I don't almost want to do it myself. I think it's the whole, like their, their entire games, I believe. Oh, like, entire games. Well, it's 10 different DVDs. 
like there's literally 10 separate dvds like you open this thing yeah, and it's crazy. got like all of the dvds so like you think there's more than 25 that's minutes crazy. per game right yeah Damn. that's nuts well, i didn't know cool. full games i mean that'd be pretty cool to watch too does it have a time on these no i don't think so sometimes they had i mean time even on still them. though yeah, even still. It, what's I hilarious mean, really... is, so what's funny is this was made in 2009, right? And the Leafs had yeah. such terrible, terrible uh, franchise luck. And we're just an awful team pretty much from like post lockout until, you know, now basically from five years ago. But huh. this thing came out in 2009 and the last game was from 2002 so there's like seven years that they could have pulled from 02 to 09 where they could have found yeah, like nothing. some of these great games nothing nothing that's crazy <laughs> nothing. so nothing a question for there. you if you were to pick a game of a modern player let's call it either marner willie or matthews which game would you pick to say is their you know game of their career as a toronto maple leaf Come on, that's an easy answer. Let's hear it. Come on. Wait, for which player? Which player do you want to talk about? Matthews? Matthews scored four, four what? goals. Four goals is oh, first yeah. game in the NHL. <laughs> is it is it is it only playoffs though? Is are the disc only playoff performances or is it Oh true, true. They that, are that, on the I mean, even that too, that's a given. That was I'll never forget where I was watching that game. That was nuts. Yeah. In terms of I mean, I guess it would have to be the only real like moment that would stack up to any of these would be like Tavares's game winner in game six to put them through to round two. Yeah. Like it's the only, only real like game. Yeah. Yeah. I was even thinking yeah, like think. talking, talking like Matthews, Matthews really hasn't had like that amazing game in the playoffs. Like maybe that goal that he scored, it was like that flick against That's Boston just this year, but like nothing really like, I like how you mentioned and went off the board too. talking to Vars. even talking like regular season. I feel like a, someone like Nylander, like what he was able to do when he went to Sweden this year, like that was just crazy. He was on a tear that week. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. Uh, I think we'll probably save it for next week and we'll get into it, but um, not Netflix. Amazon announced yeah. that they are doing an NHL series with Prime Video, similar to the you know quarterbacks and the Drive to Survive F1 series. So the same, it's the same company actually that did the F1 and the, and the tennis and I don't think they did golf, but um, yeah, they did, they did, they, they did, did do the golf one as well. Yeah. So, so they've been chronicling uh, this past season in the NHL and they've been following Willie Nylander and they would have followed him to, uh, to, to Europe and Sweden. So next year, I think it's in fall. They're going to be debuting this. Um, so we will get to actually kind of see a little behind the scenes of how that happened. So that'd be interesting. No, that's going to be sweet. I mean, like we said, F1 full swing, which was golf. I, you know, I'm a golfer. I loved watching that on Netflix. That was ridiculous. Two seasons of that time of my life watching that. And I just can't wait. I already told my girlfriend that whenever that does come out, the Amazon, and she's a big hockey fan too. She knows all about sports. So whenever that, series comes out we're just pretty much going to order a pizza do like a nice binge session so that's kind of the plan but i'm super stoked for it yeah i i wanted to get into a discussion about if you think that's going to be a good thing for the hobby i will we'll save it for next week because i think we yeah. can probably get into a bit longer of a discussion maybe i'll take a look at what you know these other cards did for some of the other players and have a bit more of a deep dive type of thing um you know, throughout the week. So we, we can have some statistical data to back up our claims. Um, so I think we'll save that for next week, but I do think that it, it, it to put a blanket statement, I think it's going to be good for the hobby. Um, so that'll, that'll be great. Uh, what do you got? Any, any plans this weekend to attend uh, any shows? I know there's a couple going uh, on. Nothing card related. I think Friday I'm golfing. Saturday I got my cousin's wedding. So that should be a fun little night. Going to the 
church and then headed to obviously a big party at night. Sunday, no plans. I'll see. I believe there's a show in St. Catharines this weekend. Yeah, Kuya, Kuya Collectible show in St. Catharines. So it is not at the big center like it was in the winter so hopefully it's a a better yeah. show yeah i'm gonna be going I'm, um, I'm gonna go check it out i'll see what happens i'll and probably i believe sunday's father's day too i believe i'll probably be golfing with my dad maybe that mm-hmm. will end up being my plan but Worst case scenario, maybe I'll head up to St. Catharines. We'll see what's going on. But I know that show was a little bit easier to access when I was at Brock living down there as a student. And hey, I didn't mind it. I obviously, you know, the last show I didn't do as good setting up. I believe the same was for you, but it was still a good show to get out to. And I mean, you know, owners of a great guy that runs it. And if you are in the area of St. Catharines, make sure you check out that show. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think it's going to be at Meriden Community Center. Uh, this time around. Are, are so. you setting up? Are you setting up? No, I'm not gonna set up. I'm just gonna. Okay. I'm just gonna attend. How much? Uh, how much are the tickets? Did you see yet? Or like ten bucks? I guess five. five ten bucks. Yeah. Oh, okay. five. Oh, that's, fine. that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. That's pretty good. And 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 free parking. Five bucks free. Oh, parking. okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was that it, was the big it issue last year. I think. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that, that'll be a show in St. Catharines, and there's another show in Barrie at uh, Kozlov Mall. Um, hmm. That show is Friday and Saturday from 10 to 3. The Kuya nice. show, Sunday from 10 to 3. So if anyone's in the Barrie area, you can go check that show out right inside the Kozlov Mall. Uh, happy Father's Day to everybody. Enjoy the weekend, obviously. And if you're if your father's a big collector, go out there and rip a buy him buy him a box. Get some get some card ripping done on Father's Day. I know that if I if I had little minions running around, I'd be stoked to get a box for Father's Day from them. I think it'd be yep. pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Oh, actually, I do have one other thing that we do need to promo. Uh, I'm also gonna be hosting a trade night for anybody who's gonna be in the Niagara yep. region. It's going to be two. It's a Tuesday. It is a midweek thing, but Tuesday, July twenty third. So about six or so weeks away from now, uh, I am hosting a trade night. You going to make it down, Anthony? I'm going to try. I mean, I got 9 a.m. work waiting for me the next day, but I feel like if I could figure out some plan where I could like, honestly, even like sleeping, maybe even sleeping at my old student house because my buddy still lives there and then leaving Mm -hmm. at like 745 in the morning and then making the drive. I feel like that could be worth it just to hang out, but I'll see what I could do. I'll see. Maybe I could pull some strings here. July 23rd. Right. I'll toss it in my calendar. You'll I know it'll be a good right. time. So I know it'll be a good time. Yeah. We're doing it at uh, DQ Brewery in St. Catherine. Oh, so yeah. So you can you know, grab get a beer and make a trade. Brewski trade. Yep. Grab, uh, grab some food. It'll be a good time. I'm excited for it. Definitely Sounds excited fun. for it. All right, buddy. I think we'll wrap things up there. Uh, that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You could subscribe right here on YouTube. As mentioned before, we do plan on getting up and running audio wise for you on the go listeners, but for now, uh, video only up on YouTube. We'll be back next Wednesday with another episode of the Hockey Card Haven podcast. 